we're off on another amazing adventure. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. I looked at about seven o'clock this morning, and five hours previously, at two a.m., a guy down in Cincinnati listed a Craftsman uh, lathe, and he gave the part number. Didn't know much about it. And a metal lathe for three hundred and fifty bucks on the stand with collets. Now I have some collets, but I don't have the draw bar. <clears throat> I don't have the full set of collets. Just bits and pieces I picked up with other lathes I've bought. This is a freaking amazing deal. Three hundred and fifty bucks. The stand is worth about three hundred and fifty bucks. Um, this this should. This lathe should have a quick change gearbox on it. It's a thousand dollar lathe. Um, the collet system that he's got, I think those are, I haven't seriously looked at buying one. Two to three hundred dollars. It's a friggin' phenomenal deal. So I call the guy. Apologize for the shakiness here. I don't have my uh, truck stand, truck camera holder in here. I call the guy at eight o'clock this morning and leave a message. Um, I call him again about 10 minutes till 9. He answers the phone. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, you still got that lathe? He says, yeah, yeah, I still got the lathe. He says, but I ain't going to have it for long because my phone's ringing off the hook. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, like, no no kidding. I guess it is. And, uh, I mean, I'm thinking that. I'm not saying that. I said, well, I says, I'll take your lathe. I'll buy your lathe. Now listen, all these guys that are calling this guy who's already offering to give you basically something for nothing, it's a great deal. It doesn't matter what condition it's in. I'm going to pay him before I look at it. It's that good of a deal. I don't care what condition it's in. I'm going to buy it. And, and all these guys are calling him. And they want to come look at the lathe. Schedule come looking at the lathe. And, and, and really what they want to do is they want to show up and they want to take something that's a screaming deal and try to beat him out of another 50 or $75. Well, I'm, I'm a lot shrewder than that. I'm not interested. I mean, the guy's already given me $1,000. Why? Why would I want to go down there and him and haul around with him and, and you know, and try to, uh, uh, you know, break his arm behind his back for another 50 or 100 bucks? Why? Why? I'll beat those other customers. I'll beat those other guys to the lathe. And the way I'll beat them to the lathe is I'll make the best possible offer. Sir, I'd like to buy your lathe. I'll bring the $350 in cash. He says, okay, come and get it. Now, I don't think he was going to call me back because I'm from Dayton. You know, that's an hour away. His phone's ringing off the hook. You know, there's people closer than that. And, and, you know, they got those admonitions on Craigslist about, you know, dealing locally, you know. So people are a little hesitant if you're, you know, an hour or two away from them. I beat those guys. Beat them to death. And the way I beat them is I'm willing to pay the price. I don't have to. I mean, it's a good enough deal already. When somebody's offering you a great deal, say thank you. Hand the money to them. Pick it up. Make it a positive experience for them, for yourself. Give them their full price. Don't try to be some damn con artist and try to rip them off for another 25 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to double somebody over and break them in half in a deal. He's already offered me a great deal. And I'm heading down there to get that lay. And I'm going to have that lay. And that lathe is sitting on a stand that I've really been looking for. I mean, it's, it's a friggin' awesome deal. I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic. I'm ready to dance. Now all I gotta do is get down there without having a car wreck. Without having a flat. Without getting a ticket. Because <laughs> I told him, I said, sir, I'll be there in about an hour, hour 20. Okay, well it's yours. Now the rest of those poor suckers that are calling him, he's gonna answer the phone and say, the lathe is sold. Oh man, oh man, it's sold? Yeah, yeah, it's sold. There's a guy coming down from Dayton to get it. Okay, well if he doesn't show up, you call me, I'll come get the lathe. Well, it's too late, it's too late. They've already missed the deal. You know, they should have done that to begin with. 
I've done it so many times myself. And, and you know, I'll give you a little example. You're walking around a swap meet and you see something on the table. It's like, ooh, you know, you got $100 in your pocket. And there's something on the table for 50 bucks. It's half of what you brought, but there's $50 items worth $100. And you think, hmm, wow, wow. I'm greedy by nature, so I'm going to walk around the whole swap meet. I'm going to pass up this deal, this bird in hand. I'm going to pass it up and, and walk around and see if I can find a better deal. And if I can find a better deal, I'll buy the better deal. And that'll be fantastic. I'll get an even better deal. And so you walk around and you don't find a better deal on something else. So you head back to the, to, to the first thing you found and it's gone. It's gone. You know why it's gone? It's gone because somebody like me walked up to the table and recognized it as a fantastic value. And I might have only had $50 in my pocket. But the $100 item, is like, it's like the item is sitting there with a $50 bill under it. And all I got to do is give the man his money. Give him his $50. And I can have that item. And I got that item. Because you walked around and tried to your own detriment to get an even better deal. I see this stuff in the model airplane world all the time. And I've learned a lesson. I've learned a lesson. I've made this mistake so many times. Walk by something really cool. Yeah, you know, I don't really want to spend too much money today. You know, but really, I want that thing. And uh, let me see if there's something here that I want more before I buy this. And I come back to the table and it's gone. And I'm the fool. Somebody else has got it. And it's like, damn. You know, it might be five years before I see another one of those things. Get a chance to buy one of them again. You know, when you see a good deal, snap it up. Snap it up. Don't be cheap. You can't afford to be cheap. Only the rich can afford to be cheap. There's an opportunity cost when you do something that that is contrary to what you should be doing. You know, if you're sleeping instead of working, well, you're losing out on the opportunity to uh, earn money working. If you pass up that great deal trying to find a better one, there's an opportunity cost associated with that. You need to pay attention here. This trucker's trying to be nice to me. It let me over in a tight spot. Give him a little winky wink on the lights. Thank you, thank you, sir. Please be courteous to these truckers, man. They, they're under a lot of pressure every day and they're working pretty hard and most of them, they'll be really nice to you. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting off subject. There's an opportunity cost. There's a, there's a loss when you walk by opportunities. Don't pass up opportunities. And uh, well, I guess that's all I got to say about, about that. But uh, I love working the deal, the art of the deal, man. And that's what I'm talking about here. Don't break somebody in half. If you're getting a good deal, snap it up. You know, just just be thankful that you were in the right place at the right time. And, you, and, and, and don't try to beat somebody up for the last nickel, man. It just it just ain't worth it. All it means is somebody else is going to get to buy that thing more often than not, and you are leaving the profit behind. All right, just started my drive. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can turn the camera on when we get there. So we're on our trip. Had, had just a little bit of excitement. Come up to the, uh, I'm in the middle lane. There's a bunch of cars in the left lane, including a semi-tractor trailer rig. But I'm kind of slowly overtaking the semi-tractor trailer rig on his right. Now he's in the left lane and we're all rolling along like right on the at the edge of 70 miles an hour. And the uh, because of the way the cars were lined up, I couldn't see the median in the middle of the highway. And bam, we flashed by State Highway Patrol. Now I'm not even really sure what the speed limit was there. Um, you know, I'm not a, uh, I, I don't want to get involved with one of these predators where I get to fund their their city or their job or, or whatever, you know, where they get to give me a ticket for, uh, and collect a bunch of money from me for not injuring or harming anybody. I'm not into that. 
I'm not one that believes that speed kills. I'm one that believes that speed differential kills. So I, you know, when I'm passing somebody, I'm I'm not going by them very quickly, um, which is a good thing because if, you know if I'd been shooting by that truck like the average person, you know, hell, I, he'd have probably got me for 80 there, and uh, and he didn't. So that's that's awesome. Nice little stroke of luck. Get off the uh, highway in Middletown to get some diesel. Turn right towards the mall. All the all the nice restaurants. Man, there's nothing. There's nothing. So I turn left on. Uh, I guess it's 25A. I'm not sure. That's probably not 25A. I don't know. But it heads south. Go by two more gas stations, and, and that's what they are. They're gas stations. They don't have food for the uh, the, the big white well diesel truck. So I've just continued on south on this road because I know it comes up to uh, Route 63 in Monroe. And I can turn back towards the highway. At least I'm kind of heading in the right direction. Getting ready to turn left on 63 now. And there should be a fuel stop here. We need to do a splash and dash. Or we ain't going to make it. And there it is. Sign of civilization. The green price on the sign that's uh, is diesel fuel at the Shell station. Wow. Just pulling out from getting some splash and dash. I was looking at my phone and I saw the guy tried to call me. It's like, oh no, what's this? So I called him back and I say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, halfway there. I had to stop and get some, uh, get some diesel. And then he starts telling me this story. This guy called him, offered him 500 another 150 bucks and he said he said man I was calling you hoping I could catch you before you left because uh, and, and oh god hoping I could catch you before you left so that you know because I was the guys offering me another 150 bucks but but you've already left so just come ahead on you see how good of a deal this is there's somebody else out there like me who knows it's worth a lot more who's making making a big offer to him so I'm heading on, you know, I mean, thankfully it's an honorable guy and he's going to stick by his word. You know, I've, <laughs> hopefully a little bit of karma comes back, you know, because I've stuck by my word in some deals that weren't so, turned out not to be so good. So I'm going to rock on down the highway. Turn right. And uh, I can't be messing around. Man, my deal almost got blowed up just, just, just like that. So close. It was a damn good thing I left immediately. Otherwise, this guy would have backed out. So uh, I'll try to, uh, I'll try to get some shots of the lathe wherever it's sitting when I get there, if it's still there for me. So he's probably calling this guy back to tell him that. Well, the guy's already left. So now the other thing, the other thing I got to watch out for is this other buyer. What if he, what if he says, well, uh, uh, send him back home. I'll pay for his gas, whatever. I'll give you a 700 for the lathe. What if he doubles the money? Then I'm screwed. <clears throat> so, uh, hope that doesn't happen. I need, I need to get my, uh, I use a piece of uh, online service software. To let me know when certain things pop up on Craigslist, but I only have it set up to show me Dayton. So I need to have it show me Dayton and Cincinnati, and uh, possibly also Columbus, so I don't miss out on any of these deals, because there's been a few of these way underpriced lathes that have gotten away from me, because by the time I see it, you know, three or four hours of the morning has went by, or, you know, just three or four hours has went by, and somebody else has saw it and snapped it up. You know, in this case, I was just you know, very lucky to be one of the first guys to call him, so. Uh, so anyways, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, teetering on failure here. So we gotta keep rocking. All right, here I am back to Gamer at you some more. Man, I'm worried to death I'm gonna hear back from that guy. He's gonna tell me to turn around. I, I hope he doesn't. 
Now, last week I had an employee off, which was a, uh, um, you know, my, my intention was I was doing his job while he was gone. He was gone for about 10 days straight. And I don't have, uh, in, in my business, you know, we don't have a lot, of, we don't have extra help. So it, it's a struggle to keep up when somebody's not there. And a deal came up locally, phenomenal deal. It was a, uh, a South Bend Heavy 10 on the metal cabinet with the motor down below. Came up for $275 on Craigslist. And this is one of the deals that I missed. And, oh, man, you know, I started to get some bitter feelings about, you know, if this guy had been at work, I'd have been able to pay closer attention to my messages and uh, I might have got that deal. I had a lot better shot at it because I could have been there Ten minutes after the ad popped up, because I'm so close to where it was, and uh, you know, I just decided, you know, it's fate. You know, you can't, you can't get every screaming deal. And the South Bend Heavy Ten, I can see in the picture, the lead screw was off of it, and the uh, person who was advertising it advertised it as uh, in need of restoration. Well, I've got a few lathe, a few workshop goals. You know, you need two lathes, because you need one lathe to fix the other lathe when something goes wrong. And, you know, you just got to have a minimum of two lathes in a metals uh, workshop. And I'd like to have my, my craftsman that my dad helped me get, that I'm restoring now. And I'd like to have a Logan, and I'd like to have a South Bend. But I really am only going to have room for like two lathes. But every lathe that I have, and I'm up to five. Oh my God, I'm up to five, and I'm going to pick up number six. This is, I, I need some counseling or something. I don't know, but, you know, every lathe I have is really cool for its own special reason, you know. I don't know, maybe I just love vintage technology. You know, one of my goals is I need a lathe that's bigger than my 10-inch Craftsman. I need a... Uh, I need a, a 12 or 14 inch lathe. So this lathe I'm going to pick up represents meeting one of those goals because it's a 12 inch lathe and I believe it's running. The guy makes, uh, mentioned to me he makes uh, pool cue parts or used to make pool cue parts. So it's, uh, it, it's a running 12 inch lathe which is something I've been looking for. <sighs> Man, I don't have room for what I've got. You know, this is a this is a problem. You know, is this lathe going to live in the back of my pickup truck? Like I have to put it in my leaky shed out back. Ugh. You know, it's it's just terrible. <laughs> it's a terrible problem. Uh, I don't know. I'm going I'm going crazy here. You're seeing a, a machine head breakdown here or something. I don't know. But. You know, I'm having a hard time with the idea of letting go of any of them, but I got to. I really have to. Um, I got I to sell a couple of them. And I've got them all. I'm working on them. You know, there's one little thing or another that needs fixed. And, and you know, that's, that's always going to be true when you buy a, a machine tool that's this complicated. Not to say that they're complicated, but there's a lot of parts on the lathe. You know, they're all going to have something wrong with them. A bad gear, a worn lead screw, you know. They're just all going to have something wrong with it. When you buy one, just figure on spending a couple hundred bucks in parts to, uh, you know, to get it to get it good, to make an improvement. I don't know. I just, I just can't move a tool into my shop and, and use a broken tool. You know, I feel like I need to do a little something to help that tool and make it better. Um, you know, you don't want it to eat itself alive because it's got a bad gear or something in it. End up with three or four bad gears. So you gotta fix that stuff. Um, man, I hope this lathe is still here when I get here. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure I finished saying what I wanted to say about the South Bend lathe that I missed. You know, I was having a little bit of bitter feelings about the circumstances around me missing it, but, uh, you know, I, I, that was not logical or rational. It's not the other guy's fault for being sick. And, you know, I didn't have as much attention to apply to this hobby as I needed to apply while I was at work. 
So, yeah, those are all irrational feelings. So I just put those things aside. And you know, these deals come up. There's another one. There's always going to be another one. You don't have to take every deal and buy every thing that comes your way. But I tell you, so far it's been really hard for me to say no to a really good deal. But I'm going to have to, I've got to do something. I'm going to have to quit looking at Craigslist or something. I mean, I, I, I'm just going to end up with lathe number seven, you know. My wife's been very patient with me in more ways than, than just this. You know, I'm, I'm I just, <laughs> I don't know, I can't, I can't uh, limit how far anything like that can go. And uh, I just have to do, I have to get this under control. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've done throughout the years is I've gotten a lot of projects going at once. And my life gets, will end up getting so uh, distributed over different things that I end up not doing well at any one thing. And I'm really trying not to let that happen here. So I'm going to have to stop buying lathes and start putting lathes together and uh, get a couple of them sold. You know, help somebody else get a workshop going. And, uh, and then I'll use the funds from those to uh, improve my own workshop. Um, I really need to sell the Logan. The Logan's cool, but I really need to sell the Logan. I think i got to do that. That's one of the lays I have that's worth the most. <clears throat> and, uh, uh-oh. Getting myself in trouble here. Okay, but it's worth the most, and it had a few problems when I bought it, and I've got the repair parts for it. Um, had a tooth missing a gear, had a tooth missing a gear, had a gear missing a tooth, and it had a uh, a wrong handle on the uh, tailstock. Well, I got both those parts bought for fifty bucks from a guy out east, and uh, nice guy gave me a good deal on those parts so I can get that lathe fixed. It's also been lubricated with grease, of course, so I need to uh, clean all the grease out of the thing. Then it'll be a nice running lathe for somebody. And it's sitting on the factory stand, which is a really valuable thing. Um, so I need to get that thing sold and then that'll give me about a thousand dollars to offset some of the money I've spent on these other tools. And uh, if I have a little bit of cash there, I won't have to, I won't have to dig, dig into any accounts or anything that, where there's any accountability. I can just go buy the great deal when it comes up. And you know, I really need to, uh, I, guess, I guess I need to get a little pickier about my deals. But you know, mostly what I'm Mostly what I'm looking for is tooling. I'm less interested in buying a lathe, but I'm willing to buy a lathe to get the tool. Uh, and this guy's definitely got some tooling that I don't have. And uh, if I were to sell this lathe, I would keep most of the tooling. The collet arrangement for sure. Um, and and he, he mentioned other tooling just in general in the ad, so hopefully there's some things here I don't have. Uh, some of this stuff could be expensive. Like I don't have a, a an, an adjustable carriage stop yet. Well, you know those are hundred bucks and up. So hopefully there'll be one of those in here. Um, I don't have a. Uh, I think I don't remember, but I think the ad said it had a three and four jaw chuck. I might be getting ads confused. I've got a four jaw chuck, but it's an eight inch four jaw chuck. It's gigantic. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to catch a uh, six inch four jaw chuck one of these deals so I'm pretty excited we're almost there we'll see